Hello everyone, welcome to the free online event, The Four Keys to Find Your Mission. I am Cristiano and I woke up with this amazing energy because something is about to change in our lives. And I thought, I feel like dancing, why not start dancing? Uh, we are going to be broadcasting this. If you're watching this recording, well, it's very nice to meet you. We are part of the Andean Mystical School. If you are watching us live, please write in the chat, telling us where you are listening us from, listening from, where where you are living, where you are dreaming, where you are treading this amazing earth. Very well. If you are watching this, it means that you have subscribed or that you have a very good friend that sent you the link to this live event. And this is the first day, the 20th, for the four keys to find your mission. So the Indian Mystical School, if you're not used to it, if you haven't met us before, we have a mission. And our mission is to wake up everyone, to wake up each other so that we can realize the miracle that is going on right now. And we are living in this garden that we call Pachamama and Mother Earth, as people say, or Gaia, as people in Europe used to call in ancient times. And we have this feeling that everything is possible when humankind, when human beings get together and share a dream, a dream of a world without evil, of a world where everyone and everything finds its place. And this has to do, of course, with awakening. Wake up! And the moment is now. So I'm going to explain a little bit what's going to be our event uh, in the next three days. Today, the 20th, the 21st, the 22nd, and the 23rd, which is the last day. Today, we're going to be sharing um, an understanding of the Andean mysticism from the Andean masters that the perfect moment is now. All there is, is this moment. Future and past are abstractions from our mind. What there is, is a flow of nows taking place now. And this is why the moment is now. Soon we'll be talking about that. Tomorrow, you will get the second key, which is listening to the voice of your original being. And I'm not going to be giving any spoilers about that, but that's the theme for the second day. On the third day, we will be looking at this belief that success comes always through sacrifice. You must struggle. Is that so? We will be looking into this belief. Success does not come through sacrifice. And on the fourth day, we will simply tell you how to find your mission, which is exactly what we are looking for. Everyone has inside their heart this impulse. If you are a human being that is paying attention, you know that your heart is telling you something and it's not go to work and it's not be a robot and follow this routine and endlessly. No, we know our heart is trying to tell us something. And we don't know what it is because the heart doesn't speak English, doesn't speak Portuguese, it doesn't speak in words. These are the voices in our heads. Our heart is trying to tell us something and your heart or your soul or your deep mind or your consciousness, no matter what word you use, is telling you something. Life is whispering in your ear. And this event was thought, felt, put together for you to get in contact and learn the language of your heart and find for yourself what is your purpose? What is your mission? Well, it sounds quite, uh, what's the word in English? It sounds quite um, audacious, but that's it. Why not? Who is going to stop you? Who is going to prevent you from starting a life dancing to Fido's just because you can, because you want, you feel like? So starting today, we are going to be checking in this first key. The first key will have, mm, let's say, a theoretical part, which I'm going to try to explain. I'm going to try to convey to you a little bit of what is this moment now that we're talking about and why thinking about that doesn't simply work. 
like I'm telling you, but it doesn't change anything, right? So why is that? We know that. We know that this moment is now. We'll be talking about that. And you have a practice because this school, the, the Andean mystical school, is not about theory. It's about living it. And we want you to experience it and to see it for yourself. Please don't believe us. See it for yourself. Let's have a look at the chat. Uh, Christine, hello, dear Cristiano. Oh, that's Sarasvati from Florida, ready to dance in this energy. That's it, sisters. I'm sure that Eowyn must be watching too. She's a bit shy when it regards to chat. But hello, Eowyn and all the folks listening to us now. As I was saying, we're going to have this short introduction. Then we're going to have the practice. And then a little story, because the Indian um, teaching always comes with storytelling. And why is that? Because we are all children, and sometimes a story tells much more than an explanation. I wish mathematics was taught us that way with stories. Hey, Naomi. Uh, it's wonderful to see you here. Thank you for being here, Naomi. Where are you from? Cristina from Bucharest, Romania. I'm happy that you are listening to Cristina. Please do write in the chat, say where you are listening us from. I'm so excited. Uh, you can obvious, obviously see to be here with you because this is such a joy to be sharing with everyone. Tuning in from Australia, amazing. Thank you for sleeping late tonight. Uh, we actually were, were thinking about folks in Australia because our events, they usually happen 7 p.m. Central, Central European time. And we decided to put it at uh, 3 p.m. Central European time to allow folks in Australia, in the Maldives, to be watching us. Of course, you cannot contemplate everyone. Maybe it's a bit early uh, for folks in Hawaii. But uh, I'm sorry about that. Earth is round. But thank you for being here, Naomi and folks from Australia. Banita, greetings from sunny Florida. Oh, amazing. It must be really hot over there, isn't it? Magic and the Montero. Hi, from South Africa. Amazing. We got folks from South Africa. I think Jasmine, she's always with us. She usually... Uh, brings people from South Africa too, because that's where she grew up. Uh, Elwin say, said hi from Wisconsin, US. Thank you so much, Leah slash Elwin. It's amazing to have you all, wonderful women and guys. So let's go into the real thing. Why aren't we living? the life we'd like to live. And then I'll take a sip from this amazing mate because we're going to put our hands into this mud. What mud am I talking about? Beliefs. It's inadequate to start a life dancing. What about the copyrights of this song? It's Fido's. I don't think they will, they will uh, ban us from YouTube. If they do, well, that's their problem. They're bad. I'm already 40 years old. I cannot dance in the middle of the street. Or let's think of a less ridiculous belief. It's hard for a woman to find a man when, when they have children. Or men, um, older men have an easier time finding a partner than women when they are the same age. Or it's better to have a job that you don't like but that gives you good money and then retire and then after that do what you really like. Or maybe um, you cannot be responsible and travel the world when you have a family. Even if you really want to do it, you have first to do your job as a wife, as a mother, and then be happy. Or maybe 
I'm not an arts person. Eowyn is, but I'm not good with art. I'm not good at singing. Sarasvati is very good, but I don't have any talent. We have many beliefs, many views about the way the world works and about who we are. And these beliefs, they have a status of truth. And we actually have, the, have you ever heard that? My truth. From my perspective, the way that I see it, and we say those things as if it had any value, because how many times have we been wrong about the way we see things, about the way we think, and life cannot stop proving us wrong. So we should have a more open approach to the things we are telling ourselves in our minds. Don't you think? Let's see who else is writing to us. Frederica, it's hard to redesign your life when you're already halfway of it. Oh, this, I'm going to put this in a shelf with a golden uh, embroidered letters. This is a very, very strong and common belief. Thank you so much, Federica, for giving us the perfect belief, especially for many of us. I imagine many of us are already halfway in our 30s, 40s, maybe 50s. So you're at least in the middle of your life or maybe closer to the end. And that's exactly what we say to ourselves. It's hard to redesign your life when you're already halfway of it. I'm going to tell you a secret and that's it. Yes, it is hard. I cannot lie. When we are older, we have a lot of memory. We have a lot of confirmed situ situations that confirm our theory. And we actually worked for this theory to be confirmed. So we have a very strong inner discourse that proves that it is hard. And of course, this makes it hard because we are very sure of ourselves. We are very sure of how life works, of how people are. We are full of disillusionment and it is harder to change when you are older. Why? Because we sometimes don't have the disposition to put, uh, what's the what's the the expression in English? When you know when you put someone on the wall against the wall, and then you say, "What are you up to?" So we don't threaten these beliefs because we are afraid that the whole building of our personality and the way we see the world might collapse. So it's kind of a trade that we do. You believe this in exchange of a feeling of security, even though it's not actual security, even though you don't feel really safe, even though you don't feel really happy, but at least it's something that you know, right? Uh, oh, yes, Federica. It, Egle, se dice Egle, uh, eagle, it sounds like eagle, right? From Italy. Thank you for coming and thank you for bringing us this amazing sentence. Vanita said, what shamanic tools are available for emotional eating and too much screen culture issues? I will go into that if we have time. And Selena from Jordan, Aman. It's amazing to have you, Selena. Thank you so much for coming. So... <clears throat> Even though some people are probably thinking, oh, there's another young guy that thinks he knows. I don't think I know anything, but I do know how I was deceiving myself and how my mind deceives myself. And I'm going to tell you, we are told that all, everything that you have to do is change your mind, change the way you think, change your beliefs, say positive things to yourself. How many times have we done that? We watched uh, inspirational videos. We have read self-help books. We have good friends that tells us good things about ourselves. But we are not improving. Or 
we don't feel that we are improving or finding out what the heck we came to do on this earth. What does the great mother life want from me? And I'm not here to give you another coating of coaching. It's not about thoughts. Actually, the trouble comes from this belief that changing your thoughts will do it. That's like trying to get thinner, releasing the belt, you know? That's like trying to reduce traffic jams, building more roads so that the cars are more dispersed. You are not solving, approaching, addressing the real issue. Sometimes we have to change the root of the problem. And if you don't do that, nothing will happen. And the moment is now. And why am I saying that? Because we are always postponing. In Brazil, for example, when people feel they need to eat better, they to have a diet or whatever, just to give an example, they say, I'm going to start on Monday. Have you ever heard that? And this is a way of saying never, later, one day in the future. And life passes through our eyes and we are not really facing and addressing the issue. Transformations in our lives, they go through transformations in habits, in the way that we think, in the course, the way that we eat, all the, the um, rooms inside our being, the room of work, the room of relationships, the living room of social relations, uh, all these rooms, the kitchen, especially the kitchen, they play a role in creating, shaping our reality and the way we see the world. And we need to address that. But why is it so hard to change habits? Because there is a legend that in order to grow up, in order to have good habits, in order to change bad habits, you have to suffer. It is difficult that you should sacrifice, make an effort. And we are children. We don't like making efforts and suffering. So this diamond that we have inside, that is filled with light, that wants to shine on our path and show us the way, it cannot because it's covered with beliefs that in order to be successful, in order to, to mature and to change, it's going to be painful. And we'd like to offer you another perspective. It's not, um, it's not something out of this world. Uh, Vanita was saying, what shaman shamanic tools are available for emotional eating? Ah, emotional eating is when you eat, eat too much, when you are feeling anxious, right? And too much screen culture issues. I'm going to teach you a shamanic tool. Turning the mobile phone off and going for a walk. It usually solves the screen culture, at least for that moment. And that moment is what really matters. As for the emotional eating, if you feel like eating a lot, well, make sure you have lots of fruit in your kitchen and eat as many fruit as you want. What's the problem? Who is going to tell you you're eating too much mango, you're eating too much lettuce? Maybe our food choices are not right. Why do we have to eat so much you know, food that doesn't have life inside them. So it's not about um, extraordinary metaphysical 
uh, um, solutions. It's about putting our feet on the ground and saying, let's do this different and let's have fun. And this is not a mental thing. This is ch child's play. When children want to play, they say, let's play. I am the mother, you are the father, and we are going to have a picnic. And we play. There's no effort. Oh, I'm going to be the mother. How should mother behave? That's the boring head of an adult. And we are children. We are playing. So don't take it so seriously. And at the same time, play as serious as a child would when you are living your everyday life. I have to read because you have many contributions to the chat. Um, Christina says, I'm 34 and I haven't reached my true potential. I've been feeling stuck for a few years and realized my limiting beliefs have always been against my own self. Yes, reaching my true path. I think most of us feel just the way you do, Christina. You are not alone. You're just in the right place. And I totally relate to what you're saying. Rusena said, ready to learn new things. Lots of light from Czechia. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Rutsena. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name right. I'm sorry. Uh, then Sarasvati says, I came to this school about two years ago at 46 in a stuck place filled with anxiety, longing for something bigger. I found a spark here that became a beautiful nourishing flame. Little by little and through the practices taught here, my anxiety greatly decreased. My courage and joy increased. It wasn't overnight but a step-by-step -step process, a beautiful process. Yes, because we are not doing this alone. We are right now 16 people watching live and we are going to do this together. I'll be soon teaching you the practice. Vanita said, low sugar fruits, watermelon, blueberries for mind, pineapple papaya for digestive health. Enjoy. Um, that's it. So... Fruits, they are, they are amazing companions. Eagle says, Christina, I feel you. So let's come back to Christina. Christina says that she hasn't felt her true, she feels she hasn't reached her full potential yet. First thing, the most interesting people I know haven't reached their full potential, potential yet. Why? Because reaching our full potential is something that doesn't exist, if you think of it. There is always room to grow. I know what you mean. I'm going to get there. I'm not just, just making your problem smaller and diminishing your feeling. I'm just telling you that this feeling that you haven't developed your full potential yet is not a bad feeling. This is actually... The, the beginning of a thread that will take you on an, on an adventure, just like Sarasvati Christine was telling us. It's not something overnight, but it's a beautiful journey, and you're not going by yourself. Little by little, by playing, we are someone else, and by someone else, I mean who we always wanted to be. Little by little, playing with life, looking at living things, looking at the light of the sun, looking at the traffic as something that is telling you something, as things life is communicating. You can open yourself to learn a bit more from the things around you and play. We have a very um, harsh and, and rough approach, and I'm talking to Christina specifically, because we live in this society that tells us that we must be successful, that we must be accomplished. And we feel bad because everyone on social media, on Instagram, on Facebook, Twitter, they're showing the beautiful prizes and the beautiful accolades of their amazing performance, either as a professional, either in their love life, and everything 
is set up to make us feel we failed. Don't play this game. This is a trap. You are alive. What, what greatest success could there be? You are already here. And this play is not over, like the poet said. Oh, me. Oh, I'm going to. I have to read this for you. Uh, I have to read this for you because this is the answer in poetic language for Christina's excellent uh, testimonial. Oh, me, oh, life, of the questions of this recurring, of the endless trains of the faithless of cities filled with the foolish, of myself forever reproaching myself. For who more foolish than I, and who more faithless? Of eyes that vainly crave the light, of the objects mean, of the struggle ever renewed, of the poor results of all, of the bloody and sordid crowds I see around me, of the empty and useless ears of the rest, with the rest me intertwined. The question, O oh me, so sad recurring, what good amid these, O oh me, O oh life? Answer, that you are here, that life exists, and identity, that the powerful play goes on, and you may contribute a verse. I love this poem. You might write it and put it in your bathroom mirror. Because this feeling that the world uh, imposes on us, that we must be successful, that you must be someone, you are someone, your heart is here and it is telling you right now what to do. Why can I cannot... Uh, listen to my heart. Why can I, I can't understand this? Why am I stuck in this feeling? Because we need to use another language to speak the language of the soul, the language of the heart. It doesn't speak in sentences. It doesn't argument. It doesn't have verbal, um, verbal statements. There is no enunciation in the heart's language. It is a feeling. And we were not taught to speak this language. So it's not your fault, it's not my fault, it's not our fault. We're going to teach you during these four days four keys that will show you exactly what your mission and your purpose is. We're not going to tell you, but we're going to give you the answer that you need to open the door to this room where the beautiful desert rose is waiting for you. And I'm going to give you today's key, which is a practice, real soon. But before we go into that, let's just check who else has written. Oh, thank you, Christina. She said, all you said resonated to me. Thank you. Yeah, that's not something I got out of my mind because I... I feel, I have this feeling again and again, because the mind is never tired of saying, you're going the wrong way, you haven't accomplished, you don't have a car, you haven't even bought a house. If you die, what are, if you get sick, what are you going to do? So the mind is following the world's advice and the world is telling us, happiness will come tomorrow, first you need to do this. You will be joyous when you get retired and then you can relax and enjoy life. But now you must work hard from eight to eight. You have to watch your children until they are 18. You cannot be a, a woman that follows her dreams and a mother at the same time. So in 20 years, you will be free to do what you want. So the world is filling us with so much crap. It's no surprise, our mind is repeatedly trying to drag us down. So what are we going to do? Let's dethrone this mind because we are not a big head. We are not just a brain the size of a watermelon. We have a heart, we have a body, 
we have a sex, we have a skin, and all these things must be invited because wisdom comes from identity. Identity means integrated being, not individual, identity, which is to recognize, to acknowledge your nature. And if you really dig deep, you will find out you are not separate from everything else. What's today's key? And then I'm going to sip this amazing mate. Did you bring your crystal or your stone? I have with me a very special stone because, you know, rocks, they are really good. Stones, they are really good. They are magical beings. They are amazing beings. And I have one here that it's very special for my awakening rituals. So what we are going to do, we will need a beautiful crystal or a stone that you already have and it's in your house already. Don't buy a stone, get one from the ground when you go to a park, uh, a stone that you think it's beautiful, a beautiful rock. And you're going to do a very simple thing, which I will teach you. If you have the rock now, fetch it, because we're going to be doing it. Then, apart from this stone, this little rock that um, should be the size of your hand, so you can put it in the palm of your hand or under your pillow, I will explain the practice. Uh, and you will need this stone, and you will need a special notebook you're going to get a notebook. Mine is kind of old because I really use it, but it's a, it's a small notebook where you're going to um, register, write your experiences during these four days. This is important because now that you are with us, you will find out with time, in a very short time, it's full of angels in this school. And the angel inside you, people call it guardian angel, we call it solar angel. This angel will join with other angels like a, an angelic gang and start a, conspir a conspiracy to awake your consciousness to awaken your heart. And this is very illogical and very irrational, but you will see it makes sense in its own way. So you need a notebook to write down the experiences you will be having during these four days. I'm going to tell you what you'll be doing today. And if you are in Australia, you can start straight away because this is something that you, we are going to do before we go to bed. And then on the second day, we will repeat it. On the third day, we will do it again. And on the fourth day, we will do it a fourth time. And you can actually keep on doing it for seven days to, to complete a cycle. Okay. What is today's key? It's not about believing what I told you. It's about opening a door from a room inside you that might have been closed. And your answers are there. But these answers are not going to come as verbal discourse. They come as symbols. They come from a deep part of you that is silent, empty, formless, full of possibilities. Get your stone or your crystal. Put it in your left hand and cover it with your right hand. Take it to your heart. And then you will close your eyes for a second. If you doesn't have your stone, just imagine that you do have. And it is in your hands and you're bringing it to your heart. Feel the stone, spin it and find its perfect position inside your hands. Once you feel it's in the right position, 
just stop feeling the stone close to your heart, inside your hand, and take a deep breath. And another one, relaxing all your body. And a third time, bringing all your attention to your heart. Feel your heart, not the sentimental heart full of bruises and memories. We are talking about this spacious, infinite heart, the cave where the soul dwells, the mysterious heart. Go inside your heart and see the face of yourself as a child smiling and playing, filled with innocence and dream. You are this child that is still there. From this purest state of consciousness within your heart, invite your angel. Speak like a child would. Come, little angel. Come play with me. I just found this group of people and we want to play. Come play with me. Please, come. And the angel that loves to play with children gets closer and touches your heart. You feel a little click of the angel saying, I'm here. And you ask the angel to bless this stone because this stone is our sacred toy. We're going to play dreams with it. We're going to play mission. We're going to play purpose. We're going to play full realization of our being. Feel the stone in your head and along with your angel. Talk to this mineral being, so quiet and so old. The age of this earth, millions and millions of years, this stone has seen and been through many, many things. It is a wise being. In your own, your own words, tell this stone what you want to learn what you want to see, what you want to find out. And ask the stone to show you in her own way. Ask your angel to come live in the stone for these four days and thank the angel, thank the child in your heart, thank the being of this beautiful crystal or stone that you chose. And open your eyes slowly. You are going to put this stone under your pillow before you go to bed. And you're going to put paper and pen or your notebook, if you already have it, by the side of your bed. If your stone is a bit pointy and you find it uncomfortable to have it under your pillow, you can put it close 
to your, uh, what's the name of that piece of furniture by the side of the bed? You can put it there at the side table, okay? Close to you. And every day at night, before you go to sleep, you do this little ritual and you go immediately to sleep. That means no swapping on the smartphone. Bedtime is magic time. And the stone will speak to you when you are in child mode, that is, no rational mind, just playing in the world of dreams. If you have any questions, let me see the comments. Nightstand. Oh, thank you. I love my friends who are always teaching me. Ah, that's why you have that expression. This is just a one night stand. Because like it's not the main furniture, it's just the sidekick, right? Learning, learning. Thank you so much. So you can put it in the nightstand, right? You can also give a touch to this ritual. You can do it the way that you feel. This is the basic ritual. You can, for example, include a glass of water because you usually wake up thirsty. So you can bless this water and put in the nightstand before you go to sleep, asking for the, the dreams to come inside this water and then you drink it in the morning. So you can add extra uh, details according to your own feeling and make this ritual as a child would, not waiting for anyone's permission. Playing, playing. Does the stone speak in images? Aha, okay, Vanita is not a beginner, I see. Eh? It's not that the stone speaks in images. The stone speaks in waves, let's say. But only our deep mind, that is not rational, is the mind of a child, is able to transform this influence that will emerge from the deep part of us, the deepest part of us, we call the soul. And it will manifest as symbols. Yes, it will manifest as images. It will manifest as emotions. It will manifest in a language that is not rational, all right? Because life manifests in waves, in inspirations, in insights, and not in encyclopedic uh, discourse. That's us with our human grown-up mind. Is it possible that the angel is a person who was dear to us uh, no, not really. This angel is infinite. This angel is the age of time. So the guardian angel, the solar angel, will, is, it is with you since the day you were born. So it's not a human being. Okay. Of course, you can pray for loved ones and ask for them to give you a little hand if this is what you feel. You can give this touch. No, nothing is forbidden. Okay, but the angel is a face of the infinite, so to speak. Don't make it too rational, just open space for this miracle to happen. And if you have any, any other questions, please uh, just write in the chat. Uh, we have come to this final moment because this is just the first key. Tomorrow we have another one, and the next day another one, and on the fourth day, the major key. But I'd like to give you a little um, gift before you go, which is a story. Would you like to hear a story? I have actually improved my storytelling skills and I want to practice a little bit. This is a story of a flower in the desert. This is the story of a desert. Are you ready for it? So there was a disciple what is a disciple? Is a person that realized that he is not just what the mirror says, what society says. A disciple is someone who is willing to find their mission, to find their purpose. 
this disciple was called Froilan. And this happened many, many years ago when life was not as fast as we are experiencing it now. So he was meditating because, you know, he watched, well, there was no internet, but it was like watching lives and practicing meditation on Instagram. He did the same thing in his time, in his context. And in one of these meditations, something inside him told him that there was something big, something huge, something the size of the universe that he could experience. It was a bit faint idea and hard for him to explain, but he had this very clear feeling that there was something bigger that he called love, a great possibility of love, and he became obsessed with this idea. He became obsessed with this intuition because it was not an idea, actually. It was a feeling, a conviction, do you say conviction? It was a certainty inside him that he wasn't able to explain that there was something big, important, sacred and divine that he needed to approach. He needed to get in contact. He needed to find out. And this became a fixed thought in his head. So he sold everything that he had. And with the money, he gave three quarters of the money to the poor. And with the little money that he kept for himself, he started traveling the world, looking for this great, immense love that he wanted to experience, a love that had all the answers and the ending to the anxiety of being a human, being a mortal being in this world. And he found out lots of love, he got involved with amazing people, he made friends, he got to know beautiful women that showed him all the aspects of the feminine, and he got to know warriors that showed him, taught him many things uh, that uh, a man should learn. And he went around the world many times, but he couldn't find what he was looking for. He was feeling like in the U2 song, you know, I have climbed highest mountain. So probably Bonovox was inspired by Froilan, this disciple that still hadn't found what he was looking for. Then he realized that it's not just about looking. He needed help from someone who knew the answer. So he started looking for a teacher and he actually found a group of people that had a teacher, a very mysterious man, but it was a very loving group of other disciples, people um, walking this path of finding what they wanted. And he asked, and he asked um, this um, maestro, because it was a Latin American maestro, Master, he said, Maestro, um, I need to find true love, love with capital L. And the Maestro, of course, gave him the answer. Oh, this love is inside you. You have to dig deep inside you with meditation and uh, you have to do service to others. You have to, and he gave you the recipe. Well, and then the disciple kind of heard that before. And Freulan started doing his practices, but he couldn't find what he was looking for. A year passed and he talked to his maestro. He said, look, maestro, you are very wise, but I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Have you been meditating every day, maestro? 
Have you been doing the 21 days practice every day, Maestro? Have you been watching Andean Mystical School lives and doing the practice? Oh, yes, yes. Very strictly, I do exactly as Chris tells me, but I cannot find what I'm looking for. He said, well, then you have to talk to my Maestro. Because I don't have this answer to you, but he will help you. And where is your Maestro, Maestro? I never heard, is he alive? Yes. Where is he? In Africa. And he just realized that it was not going to be an easy road. You know? And Froilan said, oh my God, how am I going to Africa? So this Froilan, this disciple, actually talked with the magic he, who is from south africa he said hey magic could you could you um have me for a couple of days i'm coming to africa i'm meeting i'm looking for a very wise man the maestro of my maestro and said magic said yes yes come to south africa but where you need to go it's in the desert it's in the other side said, all right he got a little money from his friends and he started the long journey. He crossed the Atlantic Ocean. There was actually, the, the ship sank, he had to swim, he went to an island, many things had happened. Two years later, two years later, he arrived in the coast of Africa and he was very excited. And he was looking for the right address with the directions that his maestro had given him. And Froilan finally found a little village where the maestro of his maestro lived. He knocked on the door. A very serious and compenetrated man opened the door and said, yes. Are you coming here to mourn? And Froilan thought this, that was the strangest question anyone had ever asked him. But when he looked inside, he found out, he kind of understood what was going on. There were many people gathering in the house of the maestro, and some of them were crying, some of them were really somber. He, he thought, oh my God, I arrived on the maestro's, of the maestro's funeral, he thought. But he was wrong. He hadn't died yet. But that was certainly the last day of his physical incarnation. He thanked God. Oh, my God. Thank you. I arrived in time to ask the maestro of the maestro where how can I find my purpose, my mission, this amazing love that I want to experience, this unity with everything? And Froilan asked for permission to talk with the Maestro. He said, look, I've been coming from a very long way. I am a disciple of the disciple of, this, of your Maestro. And he's the only person that has the answer he has the key to what I'm looking for, and I still haven't found what I'm looking for. When he was allowed in the room, they told the maestro of the maestro, the maestro of Freudland's maestro, that he had a disciple that wanted to speak to him, that he was very anxious, he had come a long way, and he was allowed in the maestro's death but, and he made the question maestro of my maestro what is the key to find the greatest love in the universe and the maestro with the last breath i will not tell you the answer now you will have to Stay with us until tomorrow. Yes, I know that was a low blow, but it's an amazing story that you will find out what happens in the end. Four chapters. 
this is the chapter for today. Get your stone, do your little ritual, put it under your pillow, have a dream notebook and start playing, playing with your angel because your angel is very excited with the invitation to participate and create sacred miracles in your life. Please stay with us. Today is just the first day. Tomorrow, the 21st, at the same time, not with me, but with one of the Andean Mystical School's instructors, and I'm sure you're going to love them, my, my colleagues, my sisters and brothers. They're going to give you another key so that you can add that to the first key and then a third one, and then a fourth one. And as a bonus, you will find out what happened to Disciple Freulein. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for participating, being with us. Tomorrow, we will ask you how was the practice, so please don't skip it. Do it. Have fun. Not for because you are obliged to, but because it's fun. Because to embrace a discipline, to embrace a proposal with all your being, it creates a garden in our lives. It opens space, it opens space for miracles to happen. And we don't want you to believe on us, in us. Uh, we want you to experience this. We really do. Thank you so much, uh, Elwin. Thank you so much, Sarasvati. Uh, Vonita has a question. Does the stone speak? I know that I already answered to that. Uh, is it possible that already? I don't know. That's already said. Thank you, Eagle. That's unfair. I know, but you know, we wanted to. We wanted to stay with us. Um, the, I was. I'm hanging on the edge of my seat. Can't wait for tomorrow. Yes, please come tomorrow. Thank you so much, Sarasvati and everyone. This is really simple. It doesn't matter if you have watched other lives. The moment is now. The perfect moment is now. Don't save it for later. Later is best friends with never. Let's live this moment with all our love, with all our being, just like Freulein from the story did. And you're going to get what you need. You're going to find. We are going to find what we are looking for. Pachamama, bless you always. Have an amazing day. Have an amazing evening. Write to us if you have any doubts, okay? We will be with you in the WhatsApp group, in the WhatsApp contact. Don't be shy. Grab it, take it. It's yours. Have it. Mwah. Thank you, thank you, thank you.